Today it's finally time. I am rebuilding a team that I personally have been following loads for the past one and a half years. It's Fine Ord. And this team, guys, has just yesterday or the day before beaten Ajax at their home ground. It was the battle between the first place and second place team. If Ajax had won that game, they would have come first place. But right now, things are not looking that easy. Feyenoord have pulled off the victory away from home and today I want to showcase their incredible players. I want to give them the props they deserve and create a historic moment by building this team up to become the best in the world. I think something that happens a lot when I do my rebuild videos is that you guys don't necessarily learn a lot about the teams that we go into but for this time I actually feel like I know every single player. I have watched at least 20, 25, maybe 30 games in the last one and a half years considering Feyenoord because I had players on so rare like Kukju, like Shimanski, those types of players and even Danilo at one point and I kept watching them and I have watched this last game as well. So for me personally, I love the fact that I can do a rebuild with a team that I really truly believe in, a team that has impressed me a lot and I can share some of my thoughts on these players. I think Etrudia, to start off with, he is an amazing player, so versatile, can play center back, can play right back, can basically do it all at the back, and also get involved in the attacks. Filinci Hartmann, this season he has been getting a lot more playtime, has stepped up big, and has even been called up to the national team, I believe, whether it be the youth national team, or the big boys. Kirkju, obviously a ridiculous talent that is doing such a good job for this team as the captain at such a young age. Now 81 rated in FIFA 23, getting the props he deserves and being touted as the replacement for Jude Bellingham at Dortmund if he moves. So yeah, lots of great things. This season's discovery, FIFA, he has been unbelievable this season for Feyenoord. Stepped in into the starting 11 and just doing bits. Just such a good all-rounder, especially defensively. And then carrying the ball forward, getting the attack started. He is such a good player. Jahan Baksh, I think a lot of you guys know due to his time at Brighton. And then Idrissi on the left-hand side, who is a player... I'm really 50-50 on him. I don't personally like him. I feel like he's too egotistical in front of goal. I think he could have gotten a lot more assists if he wanted to. But then again, that's a different topic. Szymanski is an amazing left-footed Polish dynamite type player. Only 23 years old. And honestly, guys, he can take shots from basically anywhere. And then the Mexican Jimenez up top, who has taken over the position from Danilo right here. He is such a great talent as well. So versatile in terms of his movement. He can head the ball and score. He can get himself into positions where he just has to tap in. Or he can get past people with a couple of moves. His dribbling is actually quite solid for a player that is six foot tall. I really, really do like Jimenez. And I think a lot more teams are going to be aware of these players. And then Hansko. I mean, you guys have seen me talk about him a lot in my Leicester City career mode. He's unbelievable. I would be so surprised if he sticks around. I think there are a lot of people in this team that are going to be moving away from Feyenoord very soon. Kukchu is being linked away from the team. Petrudia has been linked, but apparently he has extended his contract. So that's interesting. But I can see players like Hansko moving. And Shimanski apparently is not going to stay past this season as well. And it's not just the starting 11. Danilo, great player used to play at Ajax, now at Feyenoord, 23 years old. He is great. Il Rosun, a lot of you guys know him still. He used to play at Hatta in Germany. Paixão, a Brazilian talent that has come in and smashed it up in certain matchups. Timber, Quinton Timber, his uh, brother, the Ajax uh, centre-back's brother, he is also a great addition, but has lost his space, uh, his spot in the team to FIFA. So uh, you can clearly tell, I know a lot about this team. And for that reason, I think I am probably the best person to do a rebuild here. So let's dive in. Starting off by selling a couple of players that I don't necessarily see a future for at the club. I believe Pedersen is another one that was linked to a move away. I can see him go away. Every time I see him play, I'm not impressed. And I gotta be honest, Jahan Baksh is too inconsistent. One game, he's incredible. Next game, he is meh. So for me, 
I need to bring some players in there. And Idrissi is also on the list of sales. I'm still putting some others up there, but that takes us to 33 million. So with that cash, I can actually have a decent impact on the team straight away. Since we have seen Hansko come over from the Czech Republic League, I thought, how about bringing in a left back that is from that division as well? We are bringing in Jurasek. Now, this guy is a left back I don't think I've ever used before. He comes in from Slavia Praha over to Feyenoord. And I think this is like a typical Feyenoord E transfer. So I'm very happy about this. Now, technically, ideally, Hartmann would be higher rated. Uh, Kazan Virgil would be higher rated or Lopez would be higher rated because those guys have been getting plenty of play time and I definitely do, do think they deserve more than just a 69 or even the fact that Hartmann is only a 68 is a joke in my opinion but because their rating is very low I had to bring in a new one and this guy is a left-footed left back with 80 pace good passing dribbling and physicality with high attacking work rate he's six foot tall as well so he can win duels but rest assured guys i will definitely put a massive emphasis on the players that are already at Feyenoord. but for now that is going to be our first and only transfer for the season but well, lads we have run into an issue and that is the fact that danilo has been recalled yes his loan deal is done so we are going in and we are bringing in a new striker to back up jimenez that needed to happen and it is augustine alvarez martinez so 8.1 million spent on this one i'm pretty happy to bring this guy into our squad i'm assuming he's gonna have a decent rating here and he does 74 rated decent amount of pace and shooting quite decent at dribbling and physicality nothing extraordinary though i'll have to admit but uh this uruguayan is going to be a great backup and i think he won't complain too much but halfway through the season you can see a lot of growth within the team already which i'm very very satisfied with Ideally, I probably should play Valamark at right wing because he does have quite high potential compared to Dil Rosun. But the game just doesn't play the guy who I put at right wing. So, yeah, it just goes for the highest rated one of simulations. That needs to change, in my opinion. Well, would you look at that? In a Conference League final, we're actually up against another Dutch side. AZ Alkmaar, another team that I've been following quite a bit. I actually follow AZ, Twente, Feyenoord and Ajax because I have players from each team. But we have AZ Alkmaar in the final right here with Carlson, with Pavlidis, with a bunch of others like Mainans who has now joined them as well. Odgaard, it is a very good team. Kerkes as well at left back. So here it is. Let's see how our team does. We seem to be fit. Pasha up to a 77. Dil Rosun as well. Jimenez up to his, his 79, Shimanski 81, Kirk to 85, he is looking incredible, Jurasek 76, come on guys, 3-1 victory, Dil Rosun steps up twice, incredible stuff right here, and our team deserves that win, Paishal gets a goal as well, so we have already won a European title with Feyenoord, winner of the conference league which i am very satisfied with but at the same time i do want to know where did we end up in the league where are we first position already beaten psv ajax beautiful story straight away in the first season a fine order in the first position in real life as well so that shouldn't be a surprise but obviously the goal is to achieve greatness and champions league greatness will take a lot more than just 185 rated player in a team having said that though i'm pretty happy with the growth within the squad i will have to admit though that trauna despite me thinking that he's an absolutely amazing center back in the edit vc will probably have to go he's 31 years old we need to find the perfect replacement for that position and bringing in an 80 rated player in this case will probably be quite hard considering that the budget over here isn't as large but let's go into the squad hub real quick before we do anything else. We can see 20 Idrissi Y. Oh, he played. Why, man? I've been wanting to sell this guy. 8.7 million. You can have him, Newcastle. I don't like Idrissi, guys. I'm sorry. I just don't like the fact that he has had so many opportunities playing for Feyenoord where he could have just passed it to his teammates and they could have scored such easy goals. And he has a bit of a screw loose as well when I watch him play. It's just my personal opinion, but he has been the best player in the team. 27-year-old has done well. Congratulations to him. Jimanski with a 21 and 8 is impressive. Jimenez 17 and 3. I like that. Kirkju 16 and 18. That is unbelievable from the captain. So 
yeah, good things coming up in the new season. Before the season ends, I have decided to work on the villain arc of a specific player. A former Ajax talent was sold to an Italian team just this past season, Per Schurz has gone away from Ajax because he was not getting the playtime he wanted. Now, I am building up his villain arc, Trauna plus 20 million for this young man to come back to Netherlands and to show Ajax that they have made a big mistake. So he will come into our team. I have done this transfer right at the end of the first season because I've seen that I had like 20 something million laying around and I wanted to make the best of it. Tana, I appreciate you, but Shures is taking over. I have gone ahead and nearly loaned out the entire team and now I need to fill up the bench again. So I have gone in for Yusuf Demir, a player that was a Barcelona at one point, tantamount to be a massive, massive talent and somehow his career somewhat has fallen off. But he is going to be perfect for us. He comes in instead of Taibuni. As you guys can clearly tell, our bench is basically empty at this point. But uh, yeah, I have kept a couple of the lads, of course. But yeah, we need to stock up the defense in terms of backups right now. And I have 50 million still. So a new center back is walking into the club. It's going to be Dardai, a, a player that currently plays at Hata. And uh, he is a talented boy. So we're going to bring him in to help us out defensively instead of Hendrix, of course. That is a nice little upgrade, a 73 rated center back to back up a 78 rated one. I think that sounds just about fair. But since I have kind of loaned out every single one of my fullbacks... <laughs> I probably should call just one back, I assume. Maybe even two. I might just recall some players because they have plenty of playtime here in the club. But then again, do I want to let them go? Because then they don't get as much playtime over here. So if they don't get playtime, they don't grow. Hmm. Choices. In terms of the loaned out players, by the way, this is the roster. We have Remy out, Benita, Conte, Azarkan, who's a talented player, Bozenic, who I didn't even know was a fine old player. Kilinci Hartmann is currently out on loan as well in, in uh, France. Then we have Kazan Virgil, who has already gone up to a 76, and Boulod, who has gone up to a 77. So, seems like it was the right decision to let the lads go. And now the season is finished. So, 2024, we actually lose the last game of the season against AZ, which, you know, it is what it is. But we are creating an incredible team. Pachal and Valemark both up in their ratings. Dil Rosun has been let go. Jimenez up to an 83, Shimanski looking solid with the 84, Timber and Kirk Drew in that midfield. I appreciate FIFA, but, you know, in FIFA, he just isn't that high rated and Timber took over straight away. Getrudia coming in with the 86 rating, Hansko on an 85, Jurasek up to a 79, and Pierre Schurz on his villain arc coming back to Netherlands to ruin Ajax. Bailo up to an 84, while the bench is actually looking somewhat solid. I did bring back um, the main man. Did I not bring him back? Oh, yeah, I did bring back Lopez. There he is. I brought him back from the loan because I wanted to keep, ha uh, keep Hartman out there because I believe in him more than in Lopez. So I have decided to give Hartman a little bit more time away from the club. But let's see where we finished off. We finished second behind Twente, but ahead of Ajax, the bitter rivals. So that's okay. But Twente coming first really surprises me right here. Congratulations to them. In the Champions League, which we actually did play in, guys, we got into uh, nowhere. We got dropped out. We got into the third position and then played against Lask from the Austrian League and somehow lost against them, which is a big letdown. I would have expected a little bit more from the Feyenoord boys. And a top performer this time is probably Jimenez. Yep, it is. 28-6 from the Mexican who actually has a face scan, I'm just realizing. That is amazing to see. Valemark on the 17 and 4, no face scan. Jimanski, no face scan, but kind of looks like that, to be fair. And then we have Kukju, no face scan as well. So you can tell the striker is the only one with a face scan. Is that actually how it is? I'm just realizing we have a full team of no face scan here. Yo, EA. You gotta do a better job with the editing VC. So from what I am hearing personally from insiders at Feyenoord, Shimanski is not gonna be staying at the club. I believe they have to pay like an 11 million fee, but if Feyenoord qualify for the Champions League and get that extra money, I do believe that they might keep a hold of him. But for now, as things stand for my info, I think he's gonna leave. So Shimanski, I'm going to let go and I'm going to bring in this man right here. It is Tiago Almada, 
If you guys haven't seen the free kick that this boy has scored for Atlanta United, you have to go back and watch it. He is on fire right now, lighting up the MLS, and I fully expect him to go to a different team in this summer transfer window. There's no chance Almada stays in the MLS or should stay in the MLS. He is just seemingly too talented at this moment in time. I don't want to diss the MLS, but it's a really good stepping stone for a player like him to grow there and then move somewhere else. And now this is that somewhere else. Thiago Almada comes in replacing Shimanski, and I hope this kid can take us to that next level. Shimanski, I really like you, but as I said, inside info, I have suggested that he wouldn't stay at the club, which I kind of dislike, but hey, it is what it is. Sadly, this season we have dropped down into the Europa League and we have not been successful. We failed against Ajax, which I know fans won't be happy with. I know that for a fact. But guys, let's go into the standings. And this time we are in that first position. 82 points on Feyenoord, which is amazing to see. I actually really, really like the Dutch league, man. I've learned to love it over the last one and a half years. And it's such an exciting league to watch with so many amazing talents that then can move to big, big clubs and have huge impacts. But talking about huge impact, Kukju, 90 rated right now. Timon is up to an 86. Almada gone up to an 85. Paixal looks solid. Valemark up to an 82. Paixal definitely outdoing him. They both started at 79 this season. Jurasek only up to an 83, but it's fine. Ansko, Schurz, and Gertrudia looking solid, while our goalkeeper has gone up to an 86, and the bench is looking good as well, with FIFA reaching that 80 rating. <clears throat> so, performance. Let's see who it is. Who is it? That's what I wanted to say. Jimenez gets 21 goals, but only 3 assists. I shall 21 and 7. So he's outdoing him this season. And Kukchu is in the top three. This is really good to see. I'm very happy that the captain is doing well right here. He obviously has a, a big, big impact on this team when it comes to winning games. So I hope one day we can lift that Champions League trophy with him. But there's still a long road ahead, my friends. How about a big name transfer for Feyenoord? We have built this team up by bringing in players from all the different leagues. But now we are attacking the Premier League. It's Christian Pulisic. He is signing for Feyenoord because I needed an upgrade on that right-hand side. Valamark is not growing fast enough. So Christian Pulisic is the one. He comes in with the rating of 85. And as you guys can see, a lot of the loaned out players have returned into the club, which means we now automatically have an even stronger bench, which makes me very, very happy. But obviously... Pulisic is going to be a massive one for us. I'm going to turn him into a right wing. He's right footed anyways. And uh, I cannot wait to see him in that red and white shirt. Should be a great signing for this club. Congratulations, Feyenoord. Now we have beaten Barcelona in the Champions League, which kind of gives me the vibes like the team might be capable to pull it off already. And yes, they might be. Barca, Atletico Madrid, and then Wolfsburg. Okay, well, guys, here we are. This is the moment. Is it already time? Four to win. Come on, Feyenoord. Yes. All right. It is a bit earlier than I expected. I got to be honest. I haven't necessarily upgraded the, the bench massively, but the starting 11 also had a bunch of players that I thought were not ready for this stage, but I guess I was wrong. So let's take a look at the team that has managed to get into the Champions League final. Paixão, 87. Pulisic came in, only plus one upgrade. That's fine. Jimenez up to an 89. Almada looks amazing. Timber looks like one of the most well-rounded midfielders. Kukju, probably even better. And then we have Jurasek coming into an 87 rating. Took him long enough. Hansko up to an 88. Schurz, Ajax centre-back. Former Ajax centre-back, I should say. Coming up with the 87, Getrudia looking solid and Bailo very, very good. The bench again, we only have really Valemark and Viefer who could be good additions off the bench. But yeah, man, this is this is a vibe. I like it. I cannot wait to use this team. It should be a lot of fun. And in the league here, we obviously know we're in the Champions League final. But in the Eredivisie, see first place. Ajax second final fans rejoice. So that is obviously uh, something very important. And now... We see this. 
43 and 5. Jimenez, you are incredible. Paixão, 29 and 11. 40 goal contributions from our left wing. Almada bringing in 36. Kukju didn't have to do much this time. He had three players doing absolutely insane. I understand. He was a bit relaxed. But now, here is the final against PSG. And they have... Mbappe, Correa, Sanchez, Fofana, Locatelli, Kante, Di Lorenzo from Napoli, Marquinhos, Kim Hin Jae. Ooh, that defense do be spicy. Stepping in into the Champions League final, I cannot wait to use these players who have who I have been watching for quite some time now. I know exactly what they're capable of and what they are not capable of. So this should be a really good one for us. As Pulisic is getting involved straight away. And that is a good attempt. Ooh, that is very dangerous. I wanted to say, thank God that he took the shot because it's not gonna go in because he had really good passing opportunities. But clearly, I have no clue. That is an incredible goal by Renato Sanchez. Props to him, man. Did not see that coming, honestly. Especially, I believe, since it was on his left foot. Get out of here, bro. How is he scoring that? Oh no. Korea, what is that skill move? Stop it. It's the post. It's already 1-0. Chill. Ashao just wants the ball down the wing. He gets it. Brings it back inside. Lovely football here from the lads. Are you kidding me? What have I just done? <laughs> I honestly don't even know what I have done right there, lads. But that is what I've been doing on my Leicester City career mode. If you guys don't know about it, please make sure to check it out on Johnny Sports 2. We have a Leicester City career mode in which we do incredible passing play. And this right here might have been one of the most intelligent ones I have pulled off. Because I don't even know I did it. It just happened naturally. And Mbappe just outplaying me there massively. He finds his teammate. Ooh, thank you for not finding the other teammate. That should have been another goal for, for PSG. And they won't let me get out of my half right now. And I don't like it. It is a horrible feeling. Korea. Thank you, Hansko. Keep that in. Lovely. Oh, great. Don't keep it in that way. Oh, my God. Getrudia is getting pushed over. What? Oh, I've made so many mistakes in that one. It's 2-1. It's Korea, man. Oh, this is painful. Focus. Now I'm going to shift forward. Now fighting for the red and white of Feyenoord. Down. Inside. Lovely. This is football. You got to put power behind it, Almada. Looking for Jimenez. Jimenez. And he wins it. Santi Jimenez and Kukju. The combination of dreams. That is what you want to see. Your captain getting an assist. Your main striker getting a goal. Santi Jimenez is a striker that a lot more people out there should be using for their career modes. He's absolutely incredible, guys. I cannot recommend him enough. Such a good player, man. I love the fact that he's good in the air. Sure, loses that battle in the air. And now we're completely open at the back. But Hansko catches up to Mbappe. Are you kidding? Now we're doing a little bit of skill moves here. Finding our way through into the box. Paixão. What? Oh, the little Brazilian magician is not capable of scoring there. That's something that he definitely still has to work on in real life as well. The guy is great in dribbling. He's great in terms of getting past people. But in front of goals, sometimes he's not good enough. But then again, he can score an absolute banger from 30 yards out. So it's just about consistency with him. And he will learn that. Now, I get to make my move. Santi Jimenez and the lads now getting into an even better position. I want Juracek to get involved. There we go. I see you up there. You're completely by yourself. But I decide to take it slow. Now I find the pass. How the hell did he just keep that in? Kirkju. No, it's Almada. It's Almada. If that's Kirkju, I think we score. There's too much space. There's too much space for Renato Sanchez to run into. Sure's. Thank you for saving me. Kirkju plays a great ball straight into Almada. And he's making his own run. There's Kirkju now. Finding Jimenez once more. But this time... 
Are you kidding? Oh no, Pulisic. I cannot accept that. I cannot accept that. You cannot miss that, Pulisic. You're joking. Get out of this pitch. Who am I looking for here? There we go. Those two seem to be stacked up top of each, on top of each other every time. I see them. Jimenez. Almada. Paixão. Come on. Brazilian magic. I need it. Oh, we get lucky. Valemark. That's how you do it, Pulisic. Yes. 3-2. Come on, guys. What a moment for Feyenoord or Feyenoord, however you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It's the red and white of Rotterdam. Actually, Sparta has red and white as well. Hmm, I guess. It's the red and white of Rotterdam where you have Kukju as the captain. <laughs> we get extremely lucky with the skill move bouncing off the defender, then bouncing off of Paixão. And then Valamark is in the right spot at the right time. The left-footed Swedish talent gets it done for us. Unbelievable. Uh-oh. 90th minute cheese? 90th minute cheese? Is it actually happening? No, it is not. The Ajax talent saves Feyenoord. Who would have thought? That's it. The end is near for PSG. I see someone in the center asking for the ball, getting it and smashing it top ins. It's 4-2. It's the Champions League trophy for Feyenoord secured in the last minute. PSG is done. This has been such an amazing game. Thank you for being part of it. And Kukju gets the lifted trophy. Of course he does. This man has done so much for Feyenoord and I gotta admit, I expect him to move. I fully expect him to get a massive move. I really hope he goes to a team where he is accepted and respected as much as he is at Feyenoord because in this club, they love him. I personally love him and he's still only like 22 years old. So still plenty of time for him to have a, an amazing career. And yeah, that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. That is the last picture I'm gonna leave you with. Have a great day. Take care. Feyenoord has been rebuilt, but they also didn't need me to rebuild because they already have some great talents. Have a good day. Take care and peace.